<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to episode three of Common Unity. We're here with a very special guest, none other than Adam. Adam at the door. What's up? <laughs> How's it going? Um, but yeah, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit. You know, Adam has been somebody that's been in the Miami scene for God, how long now? Um, I moved here in 2012, and I started DJing around in 2013. Okay. So a little over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Long, long time. You've seen it all. But you, you're not originally from Miami, right? You grew up somewhere else? No, that's correct. I'm, uh, I was born in Kansas and uh, moved here for, for college. I went to music school at University of Miami. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, that was, Kind of been around ever since. <laughs> haven't, I mean, yeah, haven't this, wanted I, to leave. Yeah, it's very interesting coming from Kansas to Miami. It's definitely a, a huge, huge change. So, what was it like growing up over there? Um, my early years, I was living in or outside of Kansas City. Um, pretty typical childhood, and <laughs> uh, you know, I was I was born to two musicians oh, wow. um, who met in college in band. Um, <laughs> And so it was always a part of my life. I uh, started playing instruments pretty early on. Yeah. Um, and we moved out into the middle of nowhere um, when I was 12. And it was a very tiny school that I went to. And it just happened to have some really good music programs mm -hmm. um, and some really great teachers that kind of fostered my growth there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I ended up coming to Miami uh, after I got some scholarship to go to University of Miami. Okay, yeah. got you. And then what were some of the instruments that you were learning back then? Oh, uh, I started with viola, and oh. then I played double bass, and uh -huh. then electric bass, and then percussion. Um, yeah, uh, those were the, the main instruments. Um, really, electric bass and, and percussion were kind of what I focused on in high school. Okay. And uh, my sophomore sophomore year of high school. Um, they let me take an independent study with one of the, I mean, like I said, it's a very small school, so elementary, pre th preschool through high school is all in one building. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> and the elementary uh, school music teacher actually um, suggested that I, I pick up music production. Um, okay. And it was something that I had been getting, you know, thinking about and I was really into rock back then and okay. was playing a lot of different instruments. I was trying to learn guitar, never, never could. <laughs> Me neither. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was, yeah, I, I just got, I kind of started learning logic uh, through that independent study. And mm -hmm. then um, I found electronic music randomly. Uh, I really hadn't listened to it before uh, or knew anything at all about it. As one does. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, decided that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so I really focused on doing electronic stuff uh, with, you know, hand in hand with the maybe year experience of logic that I had up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so it just kind of clicked together. And then I was actually looking to apply to University of Miami on electric bass. and. Okay was looking for the requirements uh, for the audition online and saw that they had a uh, live electronic music uh, degree that mm -hmm. every other school that I'd looked at did not have. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm, I wanna try that, you know? <laughs> I, I've, I've been, I'd been studying it for a couple of years or two and a half years up that, at that point and mm. uh, had a pretty strong foundation. And so, uh, yeah, I applied on that and I guess, yeah, I, it's an interesting story. I got, I got here to Miami uh, to audition with that, and I was doing a lot of like live looping stuff. So oh, I was okay. playing bass and beatboxing and singing, which I'm <laughs> terrible at, um, and got into the audition and was setting up. And I was like, OK, so I mean, how do these normally go? Mm -hmm. uh, I've never, you know, heard of a school having these, and they're like, well, we're about to find out. You're the first one we've ever had. Oh, wow. And so <laughs> uh, it went well. I, okay. I, I played, you know, I, I wrote three songs for it and played them, and um, luckily didn't mess up too bad. It <laughs> didn't mess up their theory questions that they were grilling, with me, or grilling me after with, and uh, yeah, got accepted and got some scholarship. And so it made my, my choice pretty easy once it was something that I wanted to do and uh, they were gonna pay for it, so. Wow. Yeah. 
Maybe you got to show us some of what you were doing back then. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, not a chance. <laughs> uh, I, I have more recent stuff, which is not live looping involving me singing. Um, that would be not something I'm interested in showing. <laughs> but, anyways. Um, I think there was even some rapping in there, which is really hard to think about. Block it out, block it out. <laughs> but um, so back then, uh, growing up in Kansas, uh, what was kind of like the music that you listened to, especially because your parents were also like really into music. So what was like kind of like the music that you were like surrounded by? Um, I guess first you got to go back to what my parents listened to. Um, my mom loves all kind of stuff, uh, really broad taste. Um, anything that's, that's really, you know, technically nice or has a really full sound she's into. Um, just a lot of instrumental stuff, a lot of, you know, good singing. My dad, um, I think I, I really resonated with his, his taste in music. He was a jazz player, okay. um, although, we, you know, he didn't really listen to too much jazz when I was growing up. It was, huh. um, he was really into Prince okay. and uh, Cake is a band. Okay. Um, and he, I mean, all the way up to Gorillaz, he loved. Wow. I remember listening to in the car with him. Uh -huh. uh, he had a, yeah, also a very broad taste, but... Um, just really kind of unique and it's you know looking back you know w one of my favorite albums to this day are, are still ones that we we listen to in the car together yeah, a lot of the sense. albums that we listen to in the car are still ones that i listen to today 100 percent, i totally get that but you said he was he was into jazz um uh, but didn't listen to a lot of it so was he playing jazz um not since i was born uh, <laughs> oh. it, it, yeah no it was it, it's always been hard to get him to play okay. i've heard amazing things he was he played saxophone mm -hmm. uh, but uh, i wish i i wish i would have heard him more i bet so oh. dad if you're listening pull out that saxophone <laughs> please and what was your what was your mom playing uh she played flute okay. flute and piccolo yeah oh. and they met in the in the marching band at the university of kansas wow i'm surprised yeah. you guys never formed a little band you know yeah <laughs> yeah no uh it it, it was Definitely a very musical childhood. My sister also went to college for music, um, so it, it just kind of felt natural, and they were very, very supportive of it. So nice. I'm very lucky in that sense, because I would not be here if they weren't. Okay. You know, getting here from Kansas was, you know, it yeah. was a journey. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. And what was like some of like the, I know that you mentioned that you eventually found electronic music on your own. Uh -huh. um, what was kind oh, of like the music that you started finding like on your own? You're like some of that first stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, <laughs> so I was playing Xbox, actually, okay. um, during a summer, and I heard somebody playing Skrillex. <laughs> Scary Monsters and Night Sprites. Of yep. course. Yep. And then I, I messaged him over Xbox. I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and he sent it to me. And ever since then, I, I kind of just went from there and, uh, you know, a, a, a a lot of that time I was into dubstep and into okay. like bass music for a while, which was actually the, the more prominent form of electronic music in the Midwest, oh, wow. uh, at least where I was. Okay. Um, and then I came to, to school, I was starting to branch out, I was listening to a lot of liquid drum and bass, um, okay. which is what I learned to beat match with, and okay. then um, a bit of house music as well, a bit of techno I was starting to get into, and then uh, I met Karim John, a good mutual friend of ours. Yes. Um, who really exploded my taste in music okay. uh, into what it is today. I credit him a lot for that. Okay, nice. What were like, some of the first like, um, electronic, like, I guess, like, raves that you had seen at that point? Like, like shows? Like yeah, raves? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Shows, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot of bass music, a lot of dubstep in, uh, in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, where wow. University of Kansas is. They had a, a couple of nice places there. And, um, I feel like my, my ears were never the same. It was very loud. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I, I definitely you know, I would go and I would dance. Uh, nobody that I knew in Kansas would come with me. Uh, I would just go solo because I mean I, I lived in the country at that time and uh -huh. it was either rock or rap um, or country and that was that was it. Those were the only three <laughs> yeah. genres that existed there. Yeah, I got you. And then so you mentioned a little bit that liquid uh, drum and bass was uh -huh. kind of what you first uh, learned to be matched with. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah um, I cannot remember for the life of me what the name of the online radio station was. Shout out MCR, <laughs> um, but they it was a it was in Australia and they they were streaming 
almost 24 hours a day, just a awesome. very similar setup to this. Um, okay. And I was just infatuated with it. I was just listening and a lot of their, what they were playing was drum and bass and mm -hmm. the stuff I really stuck to was liquid. And so started listening to um, more and more of that and was getting more into it. Um, and then, yeah, I, at that time was when I decided that I wanted to learn how to DJ. And uh, I had a little controller that I was already messing around with. And okay. um, I'd actually DJed a couple of weddings. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, I just like met somebody that, that booked me for some weddings. Yeah. And I was just playing, you know, cheesy wedding music. Of course. And getting paid probably the best hourly of my life. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it, you know, weddings are, are it if you want to make money as a DJ, it's for sure. <laughs> it's for sure. Um, but, yeah, and then I, I, I bought a pair of CDJ 800s in a, wow. in a coffin case on eBay for, like, $600. Oh, my God. Yeah, and, uh, and started burning CDs with oh. a lot of li liquid drum and bass and um, a little bit of house, a little bit of techno, and that's, that's where I, I started, and that's when I moved to, to Miami and... Met Karim John my freshman year. Mm -hmm. We we uh, took the setup down to the middle of campus and would just play all night, and nobody would bother us. It was wow. it was really great. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Um, so, starting off with like liquid drum and bass, house techno. I mean, that's that's kind of like the foundation, especially like back then. I feel like that was what was like most common, more or less, besides like the EDM and all of that. Yeah. Um, but how do you how do you think like you've seen like that kind of music change from then to now, more or less? Speaking about liquid or, or about house and techno? Um, like, we could talk about, let's do liquid first, because that's kind of like, you know, your foundation. You know, I haven't, I haven't been listening to it much. Uh, you know, I, I started a couple years ago uh, getting into playing records, and, um, you know, that's it, really just digging around, and that, that's kind of ignited my passion for it again, and I, I found a lot of stuff that I really like. Um, I don't get to play it much. Yeah. There's, there's not many venues for that here. Um, and it's not my passion per se anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I think it, it's less about how that, that music has evolved, but more about my, my taste has evolved. Um, I've really been drawn more to what I play now, which house, disco, um, it was some left field stuff thrown in, a little bit of techno when I can, when I get booked for something yeah, that works of for it. Um, not too often here in Miami, but no. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, my taste has, has, has broadened quite a bit from when I started, for sure. Well, it's speaking on your taste and all of that, you also produce, no? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not currently. Uh, life has kind of gotten, gotten to me on that, and it's yeah. uh, something I really want to get back into. But yeah, that's what I got my degree in college for, and um, we studied Ableton. Um, mm -hmm. So I was working in Logic up until about a year before I came to college. I okay. made the switch over to Ableton. Um, University of Miami was sponsored that program oh, wow. uh, by Ableton, and so yeah, I, I got to learn it pretty, pretty well on, mm -hmm. under my mentors at University of Miami. Um, they were pretty incredible producers. Uh, but recently, you know, it's DJing has has been where my music time has gone to. Yeah, um, as I've had less and less time, uh, I've just. I, I really enjoy it. I, you know, I love the feeling of it. I, I do miss producing, and I, <laughs> I do miss having that ownership over something that you can play in, in your set. Yeah. Um, I'll play some today there you go. Uh, of my own, but you know, these, these are from four years ago. Oh wow! Or four or five years Long ago. Time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So you definitely so. had like a little break. A little break. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Something so you, I want to change. Yeah. So you're kind of like um, at least up until four years ago, like. The more recent stuff that you made was kind of like left field techno, from what I understand? Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, a lot of it. I mean, not some of it, not so much left field. Um, a lot of it was was pretty left field. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of four, you know, four by four music still. Uh, mm -hmm. But every, you know, I I don't think it sounds super club tracky. You know, I, I like to think that you can listen to it as much as you. As you could, you know, play it on a dance floor, play it for a dance floor. Yeah. Um, that's definitely the the kind of electronic music that really got my attention. Was something that is equally uh, listenable, just sitting down as it is dancing. Yeah, got you. Um, so then let's fast forward a little bit to kind of what's happened within like the past couple years. 
Um, you kind of started a little party over at Floyd, right? Discretion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I was given that opportunity uh, by the guys from Floyd in space. Uh, and it was really cool. It was just kind of focused on locals uh, every Tuesday night, which a weekly party is a lot. Yeah, uh, I, bet. I learned I learned that quickly. <laughs> but um, the hook of the party, which I think was the coolest part, honestly, looking back on it, was um, the visual artists that we invited each each party. Uh, there's a, if you know Floyd, there's a little stage inside, and um, I would invite a visual artist. Uh, to come out and create live while while we were having the event run, um, mm -hmm. and I would try to pick visual artists that would go along well with the music. Wasn't always the case, um, <laughs> but I think it was really cool to give a avenue to show their work and their their process even more than just their work. It wasn't you just looking at their pieces; it was you seeing how they create them, which I think was the really cool part. Agreed. I mean, the, I. To this day, I mean, I've been in the scene for, for only a couple of years, but I have never like witnessed a party like that, especially weekly. Like that's incredible. But it was really cool seeing um, how, yeah, sometimes the the matching of the artists and the music wasn't the best, but other times it was perfect. Yeah, and it was really cool. Like yeah. even when it wasn't on point, like it was still a very unique. Yeah, like, yeah. When experience. it wasn't 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 super matched, um, you know it. I don't think it took away from the party. You exactly. know, you you could. It, it, there was a lot of time where it was slow. Uh, it was yeah. a Tuesday night, yeah. and uh, all locals party, so we didn't have a headliner to, for people to you know to pull people out to buy tickets. Yeah. Um, you know, it was really giving voices to locals, and yeah. we just so happened to live in a city where there's a lot of really dope visual artists yeah. um, that are just not they're underrepresented. 100%. You know, so I, I that it worked out really well in that regard. I think. Um, it was actually way easier to find visual artists than I thought it would be. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. No, it was such a cool, such a cool, unique party, and I definitely wish that maybe you guys can get it going again, or someone out there. Maybe yeah, knows. no, I think. Uh, I mean, I ha I still have it in my mind that it's it's not over. Yeah. You know, um, I've just with my my new responsibilities. Yeah, I um, I, I've just run out of time for it. You know, it's kind of with production as well. So yeah. uh, hopefully I'll find a more balanced place and be able to, to start that up again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, going back a little bit, um, what were kind of like the first places that, like what was like the first place that you got booked at here to DJ? You remember that? The first, first place I got, okay. Well, if you go all the way back, <laughs> it was called Club Eve. Okay. And it was where 1306, Yes. Or, which was ATV yes, Records yes. Um, back in 2012. Wow. Um, and I don't even really count that. Like I said, I started playing in 2013 because uh -huh. it, uh, it was a very interesting event. <laughs> it was a very <laughs> interesting space. Um, and then after that, I played a, a couple of random gigs that year as well. My first, what I consider a real gig... Uh, was for the party Slap and Tickle, which was a Tuesday party at Bardo. Oh, okay. um, pretty legendary mainstay, uh, you know, party uh, that just went off every Tuesday night. And Bardo is definitely holds a really strong place in my heart. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a really special room. Uh, when the conditions were right, it just, it, especially as a DJ, mm -hmm. um, you really felt involved with the crowd. And yeah. could really just feel them easily and play to them easily because of it. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of like cool places like that, sadly, like are not really around too much. Like another famous one that I always bring up was, is the pickle. Yep. Right? Yep. After af like right after I started playing for Slap and Tickle, I got invited uh, to play alongside Karim John mm -hmm. um, to play at a party. It was. Uh, Uchi's party um, okay. at, at the Electric Pickle, and uh, yeah, we we played downstairs and had a really great set. We may have played a little bit too hard, which <laughs> we like to do in the past, and uh, we we drew a big crowd. And so there the next go. time she had her party, she invited us to play alongside her upstairs in the main room, oh, and wow. that was a really special experience. Yeah, a lot that's, of fun. It's definitely a, a place that I wish I got to experience, but has. Had a lot of infamy, I would say. No. Yeah, no, I think um, I, I think it was very a very transformational place for me. Like that's that's where I say that where I, you know I cut my teeth um, 
in, in this business learning, you know, really from on the music side, I just really felt a connection there. Felt like you could really get lost there. Um, it had a great sound system, a very attentive uh, sound tech. Um, it just felt, you know, it felt very intimate. And, you know, it was a small room with, uh, and nobody was going to bother you. It wasn't like your typical club where you're going out and people are approaching you. You know, you really could just go and you could meet new people and that yeah. would be, it's a very relaxed place to do it, but you could also just dance and uh, not care about anything else. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. Um, another thing that I like to learn um, on, like with my uh, interviewees, are um, kind of what are, is that kind of like the music that you listen to um, when, like let's say you just did like a four or five hour set by yourself, right? You're walking, driving home, and you're, you're gonna play something, but you're just playing like house and techno the whole night. What's like your go-to like music that you would go It's a good question. It's a really good question. <laughs> um, I, I would definitely turn back to one of my preteen, teenage uh, year albums that I, that it just, no matter how good or bad they are, it just holds a, a really large part of myself in it. You know, it yeah. feels very nostalgic or, you know, um, you know, there's, there's several, several albums, but a lot of that stuff is, is rock. Um, okay. Some metal, some, some not, some kind of, you know, something that I listen to in the car with my dad, you know, mm -hmm. um, something that hits home. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah, I mean, I've had people even say like stuff like silence, which is true. It's definitely, I feel like, like, cause most people, especially that aren't DJing, they kind of like expect us to like, just like play house and techno and then just keep on listening to house and techno like nonstop. Yeah, no, yeah, you can't always do that. Um, I mean, there was a time in my life where that is all I did. Yeah. For sure. Uh, it was around the clock when I was first getting into it, you know, it's uh, such a... A world with so much depth. There's so many different yeah. genres to explore, and um, especially within house and techno, it's been a lot around for a long time. So you know, there's it. It, it, it can be time consuming, and yeah. you know, when you're when you're just discovering it, your passion's at an all time high, and uh, yeah. that's all you do. Uh, more recently, I've definitely gone looked back in my in my life, like what I, what I'm saying now is yeah. you know um, stuff that's been near and dear to me for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. I know that like recently you, you said that you started um, collecting records more and mm -hmm. playing records more. Um, so how did you kind of get into that? Um, honestly, I was, I hadn't been DJing and I hadn't been, I had just been working really. Um, mm -hmm. And this was actually right when discretion, the idea for it was being formed. Okay. Um, and I just felt kind of misplaced from music and I wanted, I wanted to try something new, um, okay. and this was, you know, I was still listening to the same stuff and still playing the same stuff, but really the experience of going to dig for records and just finding what you find, um, I've always loved going from genre to genre and not really trying to stick to a, oh, I'm going to play house tonight, oh, I'm going to play techno tonight, yeah. I really just want to play what I feel I like. Um, and that is really conducive when you're digging for records. Mm -hmm. um, one of my first experiences was uh, in London, uh, where I was really just going there to, to find records okay. and um, take a little time off uh, from life. And I, you know, how I went to one place in particular, it was this, this really unassuming record shop. And they had all kinds of music. Uh, I mean, the best. so many, a, a lot of it was electronic focus, but okay. it really, I mean, they, there was like Russian folk music. I mean, <laughs> they, they really, it was just kind of an off the wall place, but yeah. because of that and their electronic section was, you know, so varied, but not organized, okay. uh, which was really cool. So oh. I was just playing record after record and like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I found everything from, um, you know, a, a really, really great compilation of Chicago house music, okay. um, like a, a really large, I mean, it was like 12, 12 records. Oh, and wow. 
um, <laughs> in mint condition, and it was amazing. Uh, and then all the way to Ludacris, <laughs> I got a, a Ludacris <laughs> record, which is somebody that I uh, I listened to in my childhood. <laughs> so I, I bought that as well. So um, it, you know, it really it, it, it's such a cool way to find music. Um, compared to just what I was doing up until that point, which was finding it online and kind of going by related artists. And you're always kind of on that same path, veering a little bit at a time. This was just like everything thrown at you all at once, yeah. um, which I liked. Yeah, I mean, and I've always appreciated how, like, especially once Discretion started, like, and I got to see your sets more firsthand, how they do kind of, they blend all different types of genres. It's like you said, it's not just like house, it's not just techno. You kind of go from one thing to another and it all like blends seamlessly, which I feel like is a very, very tough thing to do. And especially nowadays, it's kind of like a skill that you don't see very often and is not really shown for, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, like just shown a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of pressure when you're working in a club environment to conform to, the, to who is playing before you, who's playing after you, what the club plays. Um, and I think it makes sense from a band business standpoint to do yeah. that. Uh, you know, Agreed. it's uh, it really there. There are certain things you should do as an opener set, and there are certain things you should do as a closer or a headliner. Mm -hmm. um, what was special about discretion is it was just my discretion. I yeah. gotta <laughs> I gotta do what I wanted, and um, I think that was. I had been really yearning for that, and yeah. so it was a, a, a great opportunity for me to be able to do that and explore that and get better at that because I don't think at the beginning I was as good at that as I am now um, after playing every week for, uh, for a year. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that'll definitely, that'll definitely do it for sure. Um, but I mean, like a party like that, you know, like is so unique and like you said, you know, like you had the backing for it and the support for, for a party that I feel like, you know, in 90, honestly, 99% of places wouldn't really work you know wouldn't really survive yeah. no they really took a risk on it um and you know i i was i, I was working there and uh they they gave me a, a sweet deal on it you know mm -hmm. they really did I, I can't thank them enough for it yeah um it was a really cool opportunity yeah for sure um so then with with all the instruments um that back then when you were growing up you had started learning um where was like where's that been how has that transitioned either like phased out you know all those, if you still play them a little bit or if you don't? Um, so I think it's a good question. Uh, I don't play any instruments anymore mm -hmm. regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have my, my bass sitting up ready to go. Um, <laughs> I, I did not bring my drum set with me to yeah. Miami. <laughs> but both of those, I mean, those were the two main instruments for me. And I think they translated directly into dance music. Um, okay. Both of them are the part of the rhythm, rhythm section, yeah. and that's really what dance music it is. You yeah. know, it's a lot of drums and a lot of bass, <laughs> and um, how they intertwine. So I think learning both of them set me up for success in that. Okay, and then kind of because you you mentioned a little bit in the beginning how you you saw the scene in Lawrence, correct? Lawrence, uh -huh. Kansas. Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing you may have gone back once or twice um, within the past couple of years. Have yeah. you? seen anything um, more or less even if it's not firsthand kind of how that scene's been growing there if there is or not um i haven't gone back to any electronic shows there mm -hmm. i i don't know what they're playing now um actually but i i would assume it's along the same lines uh they had a very big indie scene uh okay. a, a very very big rock scene so i i would assume those are still there um I would be willing to bet that House and Techno have made a little bit of a come up <laughs> since I was there. Um, it seems like that that's a lot of places, yeah. you know. So uh, it would be interesting to go back and, and do that, actually. I hadn't really thought of that. Every time I'm back, I'm always with family. Yeah, and, of course. You know, I'm just, um, I'm just there to hang out. So mm -hmm. I haven't really thought about trying that, actually. Well, <laughs> give me a good idea. <laughs> And then, since you said that, like, a lot of the times there was, like, a lot of, like, indie and stuff over uh -huh. there, um, how do you feel like that kind of uh, culture has kind of shaped you, um, whether it be musically or just personally, since then? Um, it affected my clothing choices. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is some of the best vintage shops in the world oh. in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, shout out Wildman Vintage. There you go. And Good to know. they... they 
it's incredible because it, it really it wasn't huge back then in okay. Kansas. It was you know, but in Lawrence, um, I guess to explain it is it's the only blue city in a in a sea of red. It's okay. a very Republican state, except for really Lawrence, Kansas, mm-hmm. um, and a few others. But uh, it, it, you know, it, it was big on what they would call back then hipster culture. You know, <laughs> and there was just a readily available supply of amazing like. From 50s to 70s, 80s, like vintage clothing that was in impeccable condition that you just can't find here. Yeah. Um, you know, not for under a, a very cheap price. I'm of talking course. like three dollars for oh shirts, and you know, five dollars for jackets. Yeah. They were very cheap and very accessible to to broke high school me uh, and college me every time I would go back. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, maybe I have to go visit there one day. Yep. Um, but so going from Lawrence uh, to Miami, how was that like? Definitely a big change, no? Uh, yeah, it was a, a huge change, a huge culture shock. Um, but I loved it here. Mm-hmm. I, I really, I was, I really wanted to either go to New York or to Miami um, okay. when I was picking out schools to apply to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really wanted to get out and explore um, and see a different, a different world, you know. And this, I think, Miami ended up being. Uh, the perfect place. Uh, it's <laughs> such a melting pot. And there's there's so many cultures here, and that's what I was really seeking out. I think uh, it was really the perfect place to end up. Yeah. So even early back then, you kind of figured that you wanted to go somewhere bigger. More or less? Yeah, definitely bigger. Um, I I did not agree with a lot of the the people from where I was from. Okay. Uh, on their thoughts on life, I remember specifically arguing with them. In, in class, uh, and me being the only person with my point of view, yeah, uh, and everybody else sharing uh, the opposite point of view. Okay. So I I, would, I just wanted to to get out, you know. Yeah. I wanted to see something else. Yeah, it makes sense. And then how how have you felt? Like, do you feel like kind of this life, like the city life, is is what makes more sense to you? Um, I think I mean, right now I'm living in downtown. I'm working okay. in downtown. Um, love that. Yeah. It's two blocks from my apartment to work. Don't okay. haven't had a car for five years. Wow. Um, so I, I do really enjoy that. Um, there's parts of me that are are starting to look back and be like, hey, it's you know the country wasn't so bad. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of green green stuff, a lot of trees. <laughs> That's for and sure. I miss those. Um, so yeah, yeah for sure. I, I, me and my girlfriend have been looking at places with a backyard and trees, at um, least. for a little while now that I think we're going to try to accomplish the next time our lease is up. Yeah. I think that'd definitely be nice. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Cause especially in downtown, it's such a, such a like, you know, yeah. I mean, it's downtown, there's just buildings. There's not a lot of greenery. I think yeah. it's definitely nice to just go and touch grass a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I've forgotten what it feels like. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely can get that. Yeah. Um, so then you've, you've been working um, in the nightlife for about um, how long? About um, so, yeah, I started in 2017, the Saturday of Art Basel. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Uh, if you don't count DJing as yes. working in nightlife, of course. Um, which it is slightly, but it's yeah. not quite the same as doing it every weekend. Yeah. Um, being involved with the operations. So uh, you, you got thrown in probably the worst time? Yeah, uh, the worst and best. It was, yeah. a, it was a good audition, you know? Um, sure. I guess if we go back just a little bit, uh, right out of college, I was trying to just DJ, um, wasn't paying the bills. Mm-hmm. And so I started actually working in a factory in Weston okay. that was shipping wow. boxes to all the Royal Caribbean cruise ships okay. around the world. Yeah. Um, it was like their own little mail center. And mm-hmm. then obviously that wasn't my favorite job in the world. And I applied to become a teacher, a music teacher okay. at a, a new private school that was opening up and got the job. Oh, wow. And so I was teaching music, um, and a really cool concept of a school. Every class was one on one. Whoa. Um, and we had a full music studio. Wow. Which I got to build. Uh, wow. So it was, it was also a cool opportunity. And I, I, I'm still in contact with some of the, the children that I, I taught there. Wow. Which, um, it's really cool to see where they're going and mm-hmm. how music's still in their life. Um, a lot of them had learning disabilities. 
Okay. Um, that's kind of why it was a one-on-one school. Okay. Um, and so then, yeah, I was also DJing at the time. Um, I was the Saturday night resident for Floyd right when they took over. Um, okay. And then I got a call one night um, from the manager of Floyd at the time mm-hmm. that was kind of freaking out. It was during Art Basel. Just like, I, I need a doorman. Uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're tall. Can you, <laughs> can you <laughs> come and work at the door? And I was like, yeah, you're going to pay me? And she's like, yeah, cash, night of. And I was like, oh, wow. I'm <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm less. so there. And uh, yeah, it went really well. And I, I got a full-time job offer the next day wow. uh, to continue doing that. So nice. uh, I did both for a while okay. um, where I was teaching and, and working at the door and that proved to be, I did that for a year and mm-hmm. it was kind of wearing on me. Uh, yeah. I felt like I was living two very different lives yeah. where I was at a club all weekend and then had to go <laughs> act like a professional and uh, teach children yeah. uh, during the week. And so after a year of doing that, I got offered the um, the manager position at Space, okay. uh, the door manager position, and mm-hmm. so I quit my job teaching. And since then, I've just been in the in the nightlife scene, yeah, working yeah. operations. Okay, got you. And uh, in, as your time uh, teaching, um, mm-hmm. how did you feel like that was? Is that like something that kind of made sense for you? Was it kind of like out of there, you know? I I I love teaching actually. Okay. Um, my, my dad's also a professor, an adjunct professor at several universities, and um, uh, it just kind of runs in our family. Uh, you know, we like explaining things to people, <laughs> and sometimes that can be annoying, but uh, we're good at it sometimes as well. <laughs> and so uh, it kind of just fell, it made sense when I saw the job opportunity, and mm-hmm. uh, it came naturally, honestly, especially because it was one-on-one. I think if it was a full classroom, it would have taken more getting used to, but I'd been in private lessons, music lessons, my, my, almost my whole life. Uh, and so I was very used to that concept and had some, was lucky enough to have some really good, um, tutors. And so I, you know, learned from them I learned from my dad, learned from my mom. Um, and yeah, just put kind of put that to use. It was my mother worked, um, in occupational therapy. And, mm-hmm. uh, so I kind of combined what my dad and my mom were doing yeah. and, um, yeah, it was, it was a cool opportunity. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. I feel like, yeah, you would definitely be a, a very good teacher. So I'm sure that was, Thank you. That was pretty, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that's a cool opportunity. Um, so I wanted to know a little bit more about kind of, uh, your music taste as a whole. I've touched upon it a little bit, but definitely was interested in kind of like more or less like five pivotal like kind of mount rushmore i wouldn't say artists more so albums you know okay oh yeah um yeah i think uh starting early on um one of the albums i kept mentioning about albums that my my father would put on in the the Mm -hmm. truck i think one of those um would be comfort eagle by cake okay that was a big one um Equally right there would uh, would be any number of Prince albums. Um, Mm -hmm. After that, when I was starting to get into my own taste more, when I was starting to have um, more metal, really, it was what I was loving at the time. Um, There's this album by a band called Protest the Hero uh, called Kazaya. It's one of their first albums. Um, I think it's one of the... It's probably my favorite album in terms of a concept album. Okay, gotcha. Um, it, it, I guess to quickly get into that a little more, it's, uh, so. it tells about a story of a girl that gets killed in the Holocaust. Kind of well, dark. It yes. is. It is metal. <laughs> metal, exactly. Um, but it tells it from three different perspectives. There's nine so- or ten songs, okay. and uh, it tells it tells it from the. From her perspective, it tells it from the soldier's perspective, and then it tells it from God's perspective. Wow! Um, wow. So it's it's a it's really, it's a, it's really raw in some senses. It was like early work of theirs, okay. um, but also it's musically brilliant. Uh, a lot of key changes, a lot of time signature t- changes. It was very theory based, but also just you know heavy and mm-hmm. uh, you know angsty teen me loves that. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, what I'll else? Uh, I think after that, I think it, a, a pretty pivotal album for me was one when I was starting to 
get into production. Okay. Um, my teacher that was kind of guiding me through that independent study suggested that I listen to Wero by Beck. And okay. yeah. um, it kind of evenly is split between electronic music and um, instrumental. Mm -hmm. And also it's all produced by him. Okay. Uh, so it was very relevant to what I was doing. I was mm -hmm. coming from playing rock music into getting into electronic music. And he produces, all, he plays all the instruments and produces it all, mm -hmm. um, which is exactly what I was doing. And so it kind of hit home for me. And I, I, you know, I still listen to that album regularly. Well. Um, it's a very good one. You should check that one out. Yeah, um, And then after that, after getting into Miami, meeting Karim John, meeting Uchi, uh, and, and being shown... A, a more wide array of electronic music. I mm -hmm. got into kind of some more left field stuff okay. uh, by Andy Stott. He remains probably my, my favorite artist. Okay. Um, there's an album called Faith in Strangers, which okay. my mother actually bought for me, um, having no idea who, who or what it was, but <laughs> definitely impressed that record shop owner when she asked for Andy Stott in there the middle go. of Kansas. Uh, he was like, are you... Are you sure you, you, you want to buy any? <laughs> Are you right? Um, but very, very cool album. Uh, I was getting more and more into uh, sound design. Okay. And I think he's incredible with that. Um, he has a really incredible ear. Okay. Um, which is also, I think, the album that I'm going to play for a listening session that we're doing oh. at Jolene coming up. There you go, an exclusive. Uh, yeah, I think that'll, that'll be a good one for that. Maybe a little more challenging than ones we've done before, but yeah. um, on those on that sound system is should be pretty amazing. Oof! I wish I was gonna be there for that. Yeah, that sounds nice. yeah, it's true. You will be gone, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes. Um, um, yeah. The final one. Yeah. Mm, you know, I'm gonna have to think about that. Yeah, no worries. We can circle you. back if anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but on that topic, what are kind of what was the first concert? That you want to. Oh, okay. Uh, first concert was Lincoln Park. Wow. And a Treyu. <laughs> wow. When I was 12 years old. Uh, my wow. best friend, me and my best friend were very into rock at that time, and his mother brought us to that that uh, concert. And What time era was this for them? What album? Was um, this the Wind? This was... You uh, so hybrid theory was right before I moved, so it was probably a couple years after that. Um, I don't know if they had come out with okay. the next album yet, which I forget the name of. Me but too. but yeah. hybrid, yeah, Lo love them. Yes. So how was that? Uh, it, it was great. <laughs> Got into a mosh pit at 12 years old. <laughs> Luckily, I was I was pretty big for my age, uh, so I didn't get hurt. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it was just, I, you know, it was all about the music. I, we went, we listened, we came back. We were just yeah. little kids. So. Yeah, of course. Um, after that, yeah, I started getting into more electronic stuff when I was, yeah. you know, 15 or 16 going to Lawrence, and mm -hmm. like we talked about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what was, um, like, your most um, impactful, like, most memorable um, concert that you can remember? Wow. Um, yeah, actually, there was... There was one concert at the uh, concert, uh, one night at, at the Electric Pickle. Uh -huh. It was my first time there, um, and it was uh, I can't remember who was throwing the party. I wish I could at this time, mm -hmm. but I believe it was Regis playing, and I okay, yeah, it was it was it was techno, and yeah. uh, I hadn't fully. It was probably the first time that I really experienced techno on a with a proper speaker set up not in just somebody's house or yeah. listening to it on my own um and that was really special for me yeah um, and for regis oof, I'm yeah sure was... it was just something that i completely lost myself while i was there just yeah. dancing i didn't talk to anybody i was with a bunch of friends but i i just i just wanted to dance yeah like, and and I, I still miss that feeling. Yeah, funny yeah. enough, I was listening to Regis, one of his albums today, uh -huh. and that was yeah, definitely. I saw you posted. Yeah, I made yeah. a post with it. I was listening to the album. I was like, how appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Wow. Uh, uh, what's like the most recent? Um, I guess like you know, you've seen like a lot of DJ sets, and that's definitely um, still live performance. But um, recently, yeah. uh, the I heard the best set I've ever heard in Jolene oh. last weekend. Okay. Um, it was Ultra Them and Elias Garcia. And the headliner, 
the headliner, uh, Luke Slater, who is one of my favorites. I yes. uh, saw him at Duck Mental last year, Oof. and it was my favorite set. I was couldn't have been more excited for him to be playing at the, the club that I'm running. Okay. And um, he canceled, his, okay. you know, right before the gig. His, his flight just didn't take off, and so he couldn't come. And was pretty bummed at first, and yeah. then I'm so glad it happened because Elias and, uh, and Gami put on... A fucking show. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was incredible. Uh, Techno's never really worked in that room until that night. Uh, so I'm pretty pretty happy about that. Yeah, um, I definitely do think that that could keep happening. I think Techno in there, at least every now and then, would definitely be yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I think what they did differently was it was really re restrained, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning. And mm -hmm. uh, they didn't get too hard too fast. They really worked up to it. And it was beautiful how they yeah. did. Yeah, I remember catching some of that side. That was really, yeah. That was definitely one of the better nights there, 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to see that there's, like, techno here has definitely been growing, um, you know, with places like Domicile and stuff yeah. like that. I'm definitely happy to see that. Because I think, you know, there's the duality of it, having the house and the techno. Um, I think we do need both, yeah. more or less. No, I, I think it's, you know, any, any scene that, that's heavy on one genre, it's, it's good to expand. Yeah, you know? 100%. And you mentioned that you went to Deck Mantle. Um, I think you've gone a couple of times, no? Times. Yeah, this will be um, this will be my fourth year. Okay. Uh, going and well. it's something that me and my friends do. Uh, we try to do every year if we can. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky enough to have been able to do it several times, and I, I think it's an incredible event. Um, their, you know, their programming is incredible. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of artists that I personally want to see or have never heard of but now love yeah. um, are from there. There you go. So, what, yeah. yeah, what are some of like the fond memories that you have from your four years? Oh, um, I definitely just being there with my friends. Uh, really just being in the city. Uh, yeah. I, I, I really... It's in Amsterdam, right? Yeah, okay. I agree with a lot of the, the way that they, they, they do a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's... In a lot of ways, they're they're forward thinking on a lot of things that uh, compared to what what we are here in America. Mm -hmm. um, now, no no place is perfect. You know, yeah, they have, every place has their drawbacks, and I I'm the more I'm there, the more I see that. But I think overall, it's just a uh, it's a, a place really conducive to to good to good music. Or, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. yeah, cool. All right. Well, I think we're pretty much yeah wrapped up. Let's play some music, man. Yeah, I think it was a wonderful conversation. Uh, thank you so much for, yeah, for coming on. Where can, uh, thank where can you. the people find you? Um, you, can, uh, you can find me at Jolene Working there most nights of the week. And uh, <laughs> online, I have a SoundCloud. I don't really post much up there. <laughs> I guess you just have to check me out on MCR when I'm here. There you go. We'll see him there soon. All right, well, thank you so much for coming. And thank you, Louis. Decks. This yeah, was please. really fun. Yeah, Let's play some music. Let's do it.